you're new to RVing or looking at getting into RVing, then our new series on buying a used RV will give you some insight into various categories and models that you may be interested in, and most importantly, what they're selling for. On this week's show, Jeff Johnston gives us a good look at two very popular 2016 ultralight model trailers that you can buy in the $10,000 to $15,000 range. Also, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us how to avoid common RV buyer mistakes. These stories and more, plus our Tet for Titan contest on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. The light and ultralight trailer market for both new and used trailers is very hot right now. Jeff Johnston gives us an in-depth look at two popular 2016 models, the Forest River R-Pod and the Jayco J-Feather XRB Hybrid. Let's join Jeff and see what you can expect to get in the $10,000 to $15,000 range. Every once in a while, an RV comes along that seems to set a new standard in the industry. Its cosmetic good looks, features and functionality all add up to a vehicle that becomes very popular. Well, the R-Pod trailer from Forest River has been around for a few years now, but it's still flying off the dealer's lots. You know, the R-Pod, its cosmetics is what makes it really easy to identify, and part of one of the things that's made it so popular today. The colors are great, the graphics are minimal, you know, it just looks nice. And part of what makes it really great to tow is its overall shape. That rounded configuration makes it very aerodynamic. The front up here, this helps cut through the wind, regardless of what kind of tow vehicle you have on it. It just makes it really, really aerodynamic. And on the back, it's rounded down a little bit, and that too helps to ease its passage through the air. Now, in this particular floor plan that has a kitchen on the back, they brought the back end down straight, and that allows a little bit better cabinet space in the back for the kitchen. One of the factors that makes small trailers like the R-Pod so popular is slide-out rooms. Now this trailer is approximately 17 feet long in the body, but it's got a nine foot slide out, which is darn near a full wall slide out in something like this. Now this slide out contains the dinette over on this end and the refrigerator here, which is adjacent to the rear kitchen. We'll see more about those when we go inside the trailer. But this slide out adds so much extra space. It's not extremely deep, but it's deep enough that that adds extra floor space, lets you make the dinette a little bit bigger, and generally speaking, it adds a lot of livability to a small rig like this. Well, the outside of the R-Pod, the cosmetics, is what catches people's eye the first time. And there's good reason for that. It's a great looking little trailer. But let's take a look on the inside. There's a lot of features in there that really make you realize why it's so popular and what makes it so great for livability. Let's go take a look. Nice. These little R-Pods have been pretty well known for having a tremendous amount of space and functionality on the inside. They've done a good job of designing things. Now this one happens to be the R-Pod 179. It's got the rear kitchen, side dinette in the slide out, and a forward bed. Now this rear kitchen arrangement, this is really great for cooks because uh, if you happen to be, have cooking as kind of an emphasis for your RVing, this is a nice setup because it covers wall to wall in the rig. You've got a lot of open counter space here for working on food stuff. Little cover comes off the sink, and then when you're not using the sink, of course, you have more, more space there. And over on the other side, your generic suburban two burner stove, which does the trick. I mean, we're not gonna be doing any big Thanksgiving dinners in a small trailer like this. So the two burner works great for making our morning coffee and such, and that's really important for us. You've got a quite a variety of storage spaces down here, wide open space down here, some drawers, another handy cabinet over here. 
it's a very nice arrangement and it's got enough space here so that if the cook is working over here, people can walk in and out along the other side without banging into the cook. Very handy. Over on the side here, this is the uh, back end of the slide out. And of course you have your Dometic two-way refrigerator. Actually, this is a three-way because it'll do both 120 volt AC gas and 12 volt electric. And a nice size microwave oven, which we find really handy. And this is all, again, very conveniently accessible to the kitchen. This version of the R-Pod, the 179, has what amounts to being, like we mentioned on the outside, pretty much a full wall slide that includes the refrigerator, the microwave, and this dinette. And this U-shaped dinette is, is for a little bitty trailer. It's pretty darn big. I mean, you can accommodate four people sitting around here very easily for a card game or something like that. And uh, it's pretty comfortable. The seats are, you know, you can uh, adjust the cushions and such as needed. And this table is portable. So in addition to positioning it inside where you find the best use for it, uh, you could also take it outside, for example, and use it in your campsite. And it also adjusts for level. And this isn't quite so smooth operating. At least I don't get do it right. But um, you release it, and this folds down far enough that you can turn this into a bed area as well. Oh. Lock it back up there. So this turns into an additional sleeping space, which would be kind of kind of snug unless it just happens to be a couple of little kids. So uh, if, if cooking is important to you, when you're looking at a floor plan, you kind of, you know, you kind of look at what you want to emphasize or what you, you really need or want out of an RV. If you've got a cook in the family who really likes that, um, then this would be a good choice because of that big kitchen across the back end. And, and that all, this would also be a good one for entertaining because you have this good sized dinette. And, you know, to give you some place to hang out in case you're out on a really nasty day or something along those lines. This floor plan includes a wet bath. It's got a toilet, kind of a built-in shower, and a really small sink in the corner. It is functional and it'll do what it has to do, but it's not exactly what you call one with stretch out room. Another one of the R-Pod floor plans, on the other hand, has a bath that goes across the back of the vehicle with the separate shower. So it kind of depends on what's important to you. If you like, if, if you really want a good quality, a good size shower, you'd probably pick that other floor plan. Now this one also has a full size bed up front. We'll take a quick look at that. What you might describe, that's full size bed, maybe you can call it an RV queen or an RV full size, but uh, it's plenty wide uh, because of the small overall size of the trailer. It's like the trailer is about six foot six wall to wall on the outside. The bed space is about six foot three inches approximately from wall to wall. So for the average size person, they're going to fit it just fine. Um, I can't say that I fit, but then that's because that's my problem because I'm too tall for this sort of thing. But it was a very comfortable mattress and we slept okay on it. And that's kind of uh, when you're when you're looking at RVs and you have your priorities, one of my personal priorities is having a comfortable place to sleep, more so than having a giant bathroom, for example. So this would be kind of a floor plan that I would be interested in. And my wife likes to cook, so the big kitchen would be cool for her. This would be a great floor plan for us. But the bed area, you got good-sized windows on both ends for plenty of cross ventilation. Nice illumination up here. Uh, we'd kind of like to see a couple of lights up by the head of the bed, but you know that's one of those small details. Everybody has different opinions about those things. The television is on a mount, so you can swing it around. You can watch it from the dinette area or move it back and be able to keep watching it from the bed area. And this, of course, is also adjacent to the stereo, which is really close to everything. Next to the bed, got a nice hanging wardrobe for shirts and things. And that's top, tops uh, another three, a set of three storage drawers. So there's a surprising amount of storage in here. And there's also storage overhead up above the uh, dinette, which is very handy. The R-Pod was a good matchup for our Nissan Frontier pickup and would likewise tow well with other small vehicles. Easy handling and effortless towing made our Oregon Coast adventure even more relaxing and enjoyable. For more information about the R-Pod trailer, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Just a quick note, 
The Santacon Turbo is now available on all Jayco products as a dealer add-on option. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaCam, another great product from Thetford. We didn't make the majestic mountains or the rugged terrain or paint the night sky, but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a Road Trek can provide. This is the new Jayco J Feather 16 XRB trailer, a hybrid model. And these trailers were called hybrids a long time before the Prius came into existence. And this particular trailer has a lot of fun and functional features that you may find pretty interesting. Jayco has built family-friendly RVs for decades, and the new J Feather 16 XRB continues that tradition. The 16 XRB was a good towing match for our Nissan Frontier pickup. Lash-up was stable and secure on the road, and its compact overall size made it seriously easy to maneuver. As Gary suggested, a hybrid trailer like this offers you the best of both worlds, hard side trailer and features of a fold-down tent trailer. For the hard side part, obviously, you've got hard, secure walls that are well insulated. You've got a lockable door that helps keep your stuff yours. Inside, the bathroom is contained in here, the kitchen, you got a little dinette and a little table and storage and whatnot, and it's all within the hard side part. But then the, the ends of the trailer fold open to create these wonderful large bed sleeping spaces. And in a place like this, where we're right next to the river, when you're sleeping out there, you can hear what's going on out in the real world, and that's really pretty nice as far as we're, we're concerned. The balance of the exterior trailer setup was like any other RV. Okay, we've got the end tent platforms open, but we haven't got all of our pads set up yet. Now, anytime you're in a smaller trailer like this, it's always a compromise for where you're going to put stuff while you're setting up. So we've got a pile here to put to, to set up. And we'll start by just putting the pillows out of the way. Travis sack. As you can see, once you get everything in position, it's set up, looks pretty nice. You got lots of space here in the front fold-out bed platform, and they have both a foam cushion underneath and kind of a padded topper on top to which we have added our Travis sack. Very comfortable for this application. There's all kinds of storage in a small trailer like this. They use every possible space like the compartment directly underneath the seat here for example and there's a nice cubby hole in here that runs the whole width of the trailer as well as a couple of them up here. Um, there's storage over above the kitchen but we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Here in the dinette, which you can also uh, fold the dinette table down, of course, to turn this into a little sleeping space. But uh, between the front bed and the back bed and this one, that would get a little bit crowded. But if they're kids, they enjoy being crowded, so no problem. But this table is kind of fun because it's also portable. It's just set up on a set of collapsing legs underneath so you can take the table outside and use it if you don't have a table out at your picnic at your campground or if you just want to augment the space and bring the table over to be able to sit by the fire and have a space to set your drinks down, for example. Um, the rest of the rig is pretty well set up, very nicely appointed, and the, having the, the hard shell trailer space, including the bathroom and the kitchen area, means that there's enough space for those that they don't have to be jammed in so tight since the beds are all out here. So we'll take a look at the kitchen next. We'll be right back with the kitchen and more on the 16 XRB right after these commercial messages. So stay tuned. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that 
really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Exploration. It affirms that we are alive, demands that we are present. So let's put our work lives on pause, ramble out into the world, and share the journey with the ones we love. For more information, visit LanceCamper.com. Rolling on TV and Thetford, who makes those tough, top-of-the-line Titan sewer hoses, are giving away five, yes, five, of their premium sewer hose kits. We'll be giving away one kit each week for five weeks, starting the week of April 22nd. How do you enter? Easy! Visit our website at rollingontv.com and click on the Titan Premium Contest link. That's it. It's that simple. So, what are you waiting for? The next time you empty your holding tanks could be a whole lot easier and cleaner with your new Titan Premium Sewer Hose Kit. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our look at the J-Feather 16XRB Ultralight Trailer, a well-designed hybrid model that's a good fit for many RVers. Now the kitchen area, as you may expect in a smaller trailer, is a little bit compact, but it's not bad for what you get. And in fact, you have a very large triangular open piece of working, uh, working countertop here, which is nice. You got your two burner gas stove, single bowl plastic sink, large enough to be practical enough to actually do something in it. Large storage spaces down below. Another storage cabinet on this side. One item that you're missing in this kitchen is any kind of drawers for silverware and such. Uh, because of the sink and the stove, it's a little hard to get anything like that in here. That's why we have some of these various appliances sitting out in the open, uh, you're going to have to come up with some kind of a tray that goes in an upper compartment or something like that in order to keep your, your silverware and other gear in order. But you've got plenty of room for meal preparation, and of course, you got your overhead ca uh, uh, vent hood and fan and so forth, and your microwave oven, which is really important for that morning uh, uh, oatmeal, for example. So for small trailers, it's a really nice kitchen. On the other side of the aisle here, got a Dometic two-way refrigerator. It's either 110 volt uh, AC or propane. And you've got a few appliances up on top here. And this area needs a little bit of comments. Uh, this little platform here on top of the refrigerator cabinet contains several items. One is this really nice Furion flat screen TV, which you can rotate back around to be able to see better from the, the bed or the sofa or the dinette table. This also has the air conditioner and the stereo. Now the stereo is back here, so you kind of have to reach around the television to get at it, which is a little bit on the clumsy side. And the air conditioner is also back here behind the stereo. It's a wall mount unit. It's not a traditional RV ceiling air conditioner. Wall mount unit with the cold air exit grills on the top of the air conditioner. So if you have the air conditioner running, the air either has to come out of the space here on the edge of the TV, or it can kind of filter out here just a little bit up on top. This arrangement, um, it is functional, but it could sure stand to be a little more efficient. Our Coleman coffee maker was a natural fit under the fridge. The bathroom is roomy enough to do the job in a tight space. And there's a feature here in the bathroom that we don't see very often in RVs. Usually it's the customer that has to add this stuff after the fact. We really like it. So over here, just a couple of simple coat hooks on the wall, but it gives you a place to hang your towels and your clothes. And that's a really handy item. Thank you, Jayco. We have the, 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 the storage space back here. We use for bags of clothing, um, our box full of camping gear, and so on. 
it's very handy to have this much wide open space available in a small rig like this. Works out pretty nice. Easy towing, parking, and campsite setup, plus a comfortable level of back-to-basics camping simplicity are hallmarks of the 16XRB. It's a worthwhile contender in the ultralight trailer arena, and it's definitely worth a detailed look if shopping for this class of RV is on your agenda. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. You have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system. You can expect to make a lot of new friends. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. Purchasing a recreation vehicle is the second largest purchase lots of people make in their lifetime. When you make the decision to spend that kind of money, it's important you make wise buying decisions. I've witnessed many poor buying decisions during my time in this industry, and I would like to offer some pointers on how you can avoid some of these same RV buying pitfalls. First on my list is making a hasty buying decision. What this means is purchasing an RV without doing any research. Hasty buying decisions are common in high pressure selling environments. It's easy to see why. You get caught up in the moment, especially when a salesperson tells you these prices are only good for today, or once this model's gone, we can't get another one on the lot like it. Lots of people buy RVs at shows where there's a lot of excitement, only to discover it is the wrong type, too big, too small, or too expensive. Whatever the circumstances are, a hasty buying decision can be a costly mistake. That leads me to the next mistake people make. When I sold RVs, it was common for folks to be a little bit intimidated by the size of RVs. Just the thought of towing a 30-foot trailer makes you nervous, so you decide on a 22-foot model. I always tried to explain to people, when you tow a trailer, you don't really notice a difference between a 26-foot or a 30-foot trailer. Sure, it's a little heavier, but with the proper tow vehicle and hitch components, the length of the trailer should not be a factor to base the RV buying decision on. This is true with motorhomes too. I can't tell you how many times people buy an RV and after driving or towing it, come back to the dealership and want something bigger. This is another expensive proposition. Next on my list is buying the right type of RV to suit your needs. There are many different types of RVs to choose from and you need to make sure you purchase a type that is best suited for you and your needs. It's important you consider how you plan to use the RV. If you like to explore the back roads or camp in state parks, a 40-foot motorhome is a bad choice. In this situation, a pop-up or truck camper makes much more sense. On the other hand, if you plan to travel cross-country in the RV, a fifth-wheel trailer or a motorhome would work great. Think about how you plan to use the RV, how many people will be staying in it, and what your budget is prior to selecting the type of RV suited for your needs. Speaking of budget, you want enough left over each month so you can go out and enjoy the RV. Before you purchase your RV, factor in the monthly payment, insurance, and upkeep to decide how much you can afford to pay without getting in a bind and still enjoy the RV. Number five on my list is, if you purchase a travel trailer or fifth wheel trailer, it is extremely important the tow vehicle can safely handle the weight of the trailer. I always tell people to find the trailer you want first and then buy the tow vehicle capable of handling the weight. If you already have a vehicle, you need to base the size and weight of the trailer on that vehicle. A quick and easy method I suggest for matching a tow vehicle and trailer is to find a trailer with a gross vehicle weight rating, or GVWR, less than or equal to the vehicle's tow rating. In this case, even if the trailer is fully loaded to the maximum gross vehicle weight rating, the tow vehicle is still rated to handle the weight. 
For more information on buying an RV, check out our Insider's Guide to Buying an RV ebook course at www.rvonlinetraining.com. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. And for more information on the R-Pod and J-Feather trailer, along with additional videos, up-to-the-minute RV news, and more, visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. You can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. As usual, this has been another fun production.